Hi there and welcome to the overview of Set Hero. My name is Jesse and I'm going to be walking you through the interface today. So when you sign up for the first time, you'll be greeted by this welcome screen. You are on your projects page. You don't have any projects, so let's go ahead and start creating one. Click add project. Now you're going to type in the details about your project. So I'm going to use um, a project called To Dream for this example. You can type in your, your production office information. Next you can choose your time format that all the call sheets will be set up in and your temperature format. I'm going to stick with 12 hours and Fahrenheit. All right, once you've created your project, it will bring you to the project dashboard. You'll see this blue area here, which is giving you kind of a wizard setup step um, to get all the information loaded into your project. The goal is to get this all the way to 100%. That means you've got everything there. Over here is just uh, counter information showing you how many of each of these different elements that you have. So let's start by adding people. If I click here, it's also going to navigate over here in my sidebar to the People tab. I can either add a single person, so I could do this one at a time, or I can import from a cast list or a crew list. I'm going to start by adding just a single person. Now these toggle buttons here allow you to, if you want, disable email or text messaging for this individual person. This could be particularly useful if you know someone doesn't have texting enabled on their phone and you want to make sure that you never accidentally send them a text. I'm going to leave these on by default. Now I can choose this person's crew or cast assignment. I can assign them a position or more than one position if I wanted and uh, a cast position if I wanted. I'm going to stick with just crew for now. All right, I've created this person and I can see now this is kind of my spreadsheet view and all this information is editable just by clicking on it. If there ever is a pencil icon, you can click on that to edit that bit of information. Now, just a little bit of information about this grid. You can resize columns by dragging here. You can reorder columns by dragging them around like that. You can filter by certain terms. You can um, choose which columns to show or hide. If I wanted to get rid of some of these, I could do that. You can also sort descending or ascending orders. You can also check the box on the, on the side here. So if you have multiple, multiple items that you want to, say, delete, you can do that through there. I'm going to deselect that. All right, so I've added a person to my people tab. I see the sub sub tabs here of crew and cast. Those are just um, more specific views for for the crew and the cast list. All people, cast or crew, will show up under the all people tab. So if I go to crew, I will see Roger Wilson is again here, and he is the producer. All right, let's go ahead and add some scenes. Now I could add scenes individually, one by one, but that would take a lot of time, especially because there's a lot of information in each scene. At this time, you can only import from Excel type files. So if you have it in another format, you're going to have to convert it into an Excel file to be able to, to import it into Set Hero. I have an example file here, and since I'm adding and not updating, I'm going to have uh, add new scene selected. Next, I'm matching my columns in my spreadsheet, which is this right here, into the available fields that Set Hero has. You can see by default it's matched them pretty much perfectly. If you do have extra fields in your column in your spreadsheet, you can just opt to not import those. So if there's no match within Set Hero system, then just select don't import me and that data won't be imported into Set Hero. Okay, I hit next. And 
here you're going to see a preview of the information. This is the last step before you import. It's going to, it shows you 32 scenes will be created and none will be updated since we don't have any in the system already. We also see here that some new cast and some new locations are going to be created along with these scenes and you can see which ones it's talking about here in the blue. If there are any errors in your data that the system is having a problem with, it will tell you. So if I click, if I go here and enter a letter into a field that can only support numbers, such as the number of extras, it's going to say one error. Fix this by editing the red cells below. So if you do see an error message like that, you can edit those values um, so that they fit the criteria and then click off of them and it should validate correctly. So once you're ready to go, all this looks good, you can go ahead and hit improve and import. It's gonna ask, are you sure? It's telling me it's going to create new records. My data was imported, hooray! And here I can see all my scenes. Again, this information is editable in line by clicking and editing. And I can also click on the pencil here to open it in this pop-up view and edit it that way. Now we can see that when it imported those scenes, it created those cast members as well. So I can go in here and start naming these cast members. Now, I could name these all individually, but if I have a large cast of maybe 50 people, that's gonna take a while. So I'm actually gonna import from a, a cast list that I have. Again, selecting the file from Excel, and then choosing to add new cast, but I'm also gonna select update existing cast so that the ones that I do have won't be, won't be duplicated. Now you can see here that the, the column names that I had in my spreadsheet were, weren't quite as nicely named as the, the scene list. So I have to make sure that, I've, that these have been auto-matched correctly. It looks like they have except for this one, position name and full name. That didn't work quite right, so I'm not going to import the full name because I've got their first name and their last name right here. You also see now, since I'm updating this field here on the left, update based on. This means what is your key index that it's going to look for to match existing records with your new records. So I'm choosing character number. I hit next and it's going to overview what the data is looking like. I can see here the ones with that navy uh, refresh icon that's showing that those items will be updated since they already exist and then ones with the blue plus will be added and the summary is right up here. I'm going to hit Approve and Import, and there we go. The data was imported. All right, now we might have to flip back here to see the changes. There we go. We've got the character numbers. It's kept, it's updated the ones that already existed and added these new numbers. So that's great, and I can see it added these people as well. So if I go to the People view, I'm going to see now a lot more people than I had before. All right, now we also need to upload information for the crew list and the locations, which we already have some of these in here. I'm not going to bore you with that, so we're going to skip ahead to the point where I already have all this information loaded. Okay, I got locations loaded in, and now crew. All right, I finished loading in my crew data, which means all of our data is in here. So if I go back to the dashboard, you can see that I'm 75% completed. I've already added in people, casts, crew, locations, and scenes. And my next step is to start setting up my schedule and creating my first call sheet. And for that, check out the next video in this walkthrough series where we'll go through building a call sheet step-by-step. -step. Feel free to comment on the videos if you have questions or suggestions. Um, and you can always email us at support at and we'll do our best to help you out. Thanks for watching.